What's up guys, it's Aaron Nitmar, and today I really just feel like ranting. I've been playing quite a bit of casual online Smash when I do play online, you know, with items and final smashes and all stages and things like that. And something that has occurred to me is that there are some really, really bad final smashes in the game. So today I just wanted to talk about them and just sort of air my grievances with these specific characters and their final smashes. So let's start with the head honcho himself, Mario. I get that back in Brawl they had a different design philosophy with the final smashes, but I'm honestly surprised that after all this time Mario has not received a new final smash in any way. I get that it's supposed to be a souped up version of his fireballs, but man it just never felt like it matched Mario. And this isn't even to consider that the move itself is kinda jank. You have to be unbelievably close to the edge of the screen in order to actually be able to get it to kill. The way that it spirals out makes it very, very easy, even if you're like the middle of the stage, to be able to just fall straight out. Like the, the pattern just gets so much bigger that the hitboxes don't reliably connect to each other and it makes it really, really easy to just simply survive. And the same thing goes for Dr. Mario. His is pretty much functionally the same, and so it's just as easy to fall out of and not result in a kill. It's just not great. I will say one thing that I like is the way that they went about reskinning Dr. Mario's to be more according to his neutral B, the pills, and you know, just his character. I've always really liked that, and I think that we can all agree that they did a good job, at least with that. And I think something else that we can all agree on is that this video is indeed sponsored by Ridge Wallets. The Ridge Wallet is a light, sleek, industrial wallet that doesn't fold or bulge awkwardly in your back pocket, and it seriously changed my whole pocket situation. The Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash, and has over 30 colors and styles with 30,000 five-star reviews. And on top of that, it has RFID blocking technology, which means your information is safe from digital pickpocketers. The durable materials mean that each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. The Ridge team is so confident you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days, and if you don't like it, you get your money back. So if you'd like to upgrade your pocket situation, head on over to ridge.com slash Aaron Nitmar, and be sure you use code Aaron Nitmar for 10% off your order plus free worldwide shipping. But let's talk about the meat of this video, the character whose final smash I hate above all others, and that is the final smash of the Ice Climbers. Now I know it's great that the Ice Climbers are back, you know, they missed Smash 4 and now they're back in Ultimate and it's great, but man, their final smash is just cheeks. Now a new thing that they implemented for Smash Ultimate is that the Iceberg can be moved from side to side based on your input on the control stick. And in theory this works really well because if it's just floating in the center, then it kind of doesn't really pose much of a hazard. But if you can move it closer and closer to the edge of the screen near a player, that can potentially actually result in a kill. The problem comes from the fact that when you use this, you are on the stage, and so you have to be walking in order to actually move the iceberg. Now the Smash team kind of planned for this because there is a condor that flies at the top of the screen that the player can grab onto in order to avoid having to walk while moving the iceberg. But the problem is this condor is so high up and he moves kind of fast that it actually can be difficult to grab onto. So if you're even able to grab onto it in time, you don't have very much time to actually benefit from moving the control stick back and forth and getting a kill. On top of the fact that the iceberg only is kind of strong, like it's, it's middle of the road I would say, this kind of just ruins the final smash. This could easily be fixed by the Ice Climber starting the final smash being teleported onto the Condor and being able to move the Iceberg freely, and then having the option to press down on their control stick and then begin to move around the stage in case, you know, they see an opportunity to actually secure a kill. That would actually work very, very well, but for some reason they don't, and this final smash, as the Ice Climbers, it really just feels like a waste. I mean, it, it's good to use it. If they're at high percent, it can very easily kill in one or two hits, but circumstantially, it just doesn't always work very well, and I just don't like it. It took me so long to get Ice Climbers into Elite Smash. 
I used items to sort of cheese it because the last few characters I was just sick of trying to play them in an actual competitive sense with no items on battlefield forms and Ice Climbers were one of the last characters that I had to get into Elite Smash and so I've got no joke something like 10 hours with Ice Climbers and I can very conclusively say that they're Final Smash just sucks very, very badly. Now I got a bone to pick with Mr. Bowser Jr. over here, and it actually has to do with the rest of his costumes being the Koopalings. Now his Final Smash is him turning into Shadow Mario, and if you're playing as Bowser Jr., this makes sense. But all the other Koopalings, they don't turn into Shadow Mario ever. So what the heck are they doing turning into Shadow Mario for their Final Smash? It makes no sense to me. It actually kind of annoys me because normally they pay a ton of attention to detail, but this just feels like they kind of ignore the rules. On top of that, the Final Smash just kind of sucks. It feels like it's very easy to not be on the painted X portion of the screen, and therefore you just completely avoid all of the damage that you would ordinarily receive. But my biggest and chief complaint is, of course, that Bowser Jr. is the only one who should be turning into Shadow Mario. Now, if we somehow saw some kind of cutscene where we see that it is indeed Bowser Jr. when you're playing as a Koopaling, all right, that makes sense. They're working together. They do that all the time in Mario. But that's not what is happening, and I just... It, it has never made sense to me, and I just don't like Bowser Jr.'s Final Smash for that reason alone. Sonic's Final Smash really just doesn't feel like it's very good either. I have a lot of experience on the receiving end of this Final Smash, and really it is very, very simple to not die to. Unless you are already at super, super high percent and the first two or so hits actually send you high enough to die, you can just sort of camp out in the blast zone off-screen area that Sonic can't actually access based on you know just the limitations of the final smash he can only go to the edge of the screen but you're able to hover around that area where you can't actually see anything so you can use your recovery your air dodge you can really just avoid this final smash a lot um, you're gonna get hit because you're gonna get knocked up to the top but mid percent even like mid to high percent i would say that you aren't going to die if you don't get hit way up there near the top blast zone and it's, it's just not good and i don't know i mean i know why they did it because they went from the controllable supersonic to this one that's only semi-controllable but man it's just it's i don't know that it's a downgrade i think it's a side grade because the other one wasn't amazing either but this one is just meh in its own way Jigglypuff's Final Smash has always confused me. On a stage that's big enough, you're simply just not going to get hit by it. You're just, you're just not. And on top of that, it's really easy to not die even if you're right up against it. If you could somehow grab the edge and you just abuse your invin invincibility, you're just not going to get hit. I don't know why they've insisted on keeping this Final Smash for Brawl, Smash 4, Ultimate, and it's just seemingly stayed exactly as bad as it's always been, but I, I don't know, it just, it's never made a lot of sense to me, this Final Smash, you know, conceptually and in execution. It just never seemed to work too well for me. All right, now let's talk about Ness and Lucas, AKA the PK Starstorm Final Smash pair. This Final Smash has always been strange to me because it feels very, very random. You see people say that your input on the control stick has an influence on which way that the star storm meteor things are going to lean to, but honestly, I've never really seen any kind of evidence that actually supports that. That seems like one of those internet rumor hearsay things that, you know, oh yeah, it does, but it doesn't actually, it just seems like it. Like maybe they had a couple of good RNG runs and they were able to deduce that's maybe what happened. But to me, it's always just felt random. It feels like half the time you are guaranteed to die. They're gonna send like four meteors your way and you're just gonna get juggled off to the side. I and mean, then sometimes it's just like, yeah, I stood still and they completely avoided me. It just, this Final Smash has not made a lot of sense to me since its inception in Brawl, and it seemingly it's just stayed the same, just like Jigglypuffs. It's just stayed the same. It hasn't really been too amazing. Like I said, it just feels like a 50-50. I will say one of my favorite things about it in Ultimate, though, is that Ness gets Paula and Pooh, and Lucas gets Boney and Kumatora. 
uh, to join them next to them. Um, it, I don't know, just a, that's just a little nice little Easter egg touch. I, I like that. And lastly, let's talk about Dark Pit. I have always disliked this final Smash since Smash 4, but even since Brawl, because this is actually just a repurposed Sheik and Zelda Light Arrow Final Smash. I have never really liked it. Sheik and Zelda had it in Brawl, Sheik, Zelda, and Dark Pit had it in Smash 4, and now in Ultimate, only Dark Pit has it. We were two-thirds of the way there. We were so close to having it be completely out of the game. Now, it makes sense for this character to have it because it's, he's a clone character, so it makes sense for his Final Smash to also be a clone of somebody else's, but I've just never liked it. If they completely deleted it and gave him some other Final Smash, even something as basic, I would be fine with it. Delete Dark Pit's Final Smash.